Hello, welcome. Hey, hey. <laughs> welcome to Shalim Reading Shed. No, not water. Text starts early, I see. Oh, Skyrim update. What the fuck? Skyrim update? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Seems like a nice update. Mm. Ah. There we go. Hey, hey. And welcome to Thursday stream, because there was no Wednesday stream, because... Fuck. <laughs> trains. Fuck trains. There we go. But now we're here again with Shadow Slave immediately. Isn't that nice? Yes, it is. Of course. Nice. Because we ended off on a fucking crazy... Uh, uh, cliffhanger is what it's called. A nice caliber for being first. Congrats. If you fight one enemy in a very specific scenario, the game might not crash. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Shh. <laughs> 
Yes. We will continue, at least. <laughs> hmm. We're standing straight. Here we are. Last time was crazy. Um. Uh, Harper died. <laughs> and, um. Caster is helping us hiding the body. He is very happy about that, that he has leverage on us. Um, and then Cassie was like, goodbye forever, kind of speech. Um, and she gave us her um, water bottle. And then... We talked to Neff, uh, and we confronted her. Be like, "Bitch, you're trying to kill everyone." And she's like, "No," and now we're like, "But you are," and she's like, "Fine, you got me." And she's he and yeah, and uh, Sunny told Neff, and he said, "Oh, it's just on screen," and he said, "Fuck you, Neff." Uh, <laughs> And to go fuck herself. So that just stunned me. It's like, what? <laughs> um, so it was a crazy last chapter. It was insane. Oh, and we had the um, backstory with Rain, Sunny's sister. And that she was living happily in a home. And she did not need his saving. And he was like, oh. Sadness. And I got sad. <laughs> um, that's what happened next uh, next time. Next time, that's gonna happen. Spoilers, by the way. Got you. That's what happened last time. My, <gasps> you have a bird. What kind of bird? Hello, bird. <laughs> My bird says hello to you. <laughs> you know, living such a sunny life. Agreed, agreed. Meowdy, cat racer, hello. Go Googling. Coffin. Cockatoo. Hello, Manti. Howdy. Oh, it's one of those. It's so cute. Ah, oh, adorable. No, not the ad realm. Wait, I want to show these. They're so cute. What? What? <laughs> the fuck? Okay, this is a fucked up fucking cut, but look at them. Look at them, they're so cute. It said hello to me. <laughs> yes, they're so cute. Adorable. Hello, Mojo. Harper died last stream, I think. A goblin! Oh, Maggie! Cute! <laughs> I love Maggie now. Adorable. Um... That's it. A fucking briefing summary. Yes. From last time. Done. And now we are... Gonna continue and see what the fuck happens after this. She just confessed. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not nice. Basically, I guess. We'll see. She might just be like... I don't know. We'll see what she says. But... Mm, okay. Chapter 167. Unforgivable. 
Oh, I guess she was right. <laughs> she mean it. She meant it. Darling, you give love a bad name. Chapter 167, Unforgivable. <laughs> Sonny stared at Nevis, stunned by her answer. He didn't expect her to admit it so easily. Meanwhile, she just shrugged. What? Was I supposed to deny it? Why should I? You are the one who is obsessed with lies, Sonny, not me. The corner of Changing Star's mouth twitched. Actually, I have to thank you. If it wasn't for you, I would have never learned how, how to deceive people so easily. I had a very sheltered upbringing, for obvious reasons. Communicating with others had always been something I knew very little about. <laughs> she smiled darkly. How fortunate it was to meet you, of all people, on the Forsaken Shore. Lucky me, right? Sunny blinked. What was she talking about? He remembered how, during their journey to the Dark City, Nephis had tried to mimic Cassie in how she spoke to people. Had she been studying him too? Of, of course, what? <laughs> <clears throat> Neff took a step forward and pierced him with an intense, burning gaze. No one survives in the dream realm alone. I knew that I won't... I knew that I won't be an exception to this rule. So I watched Cassie and you and tried my hardest to learn from you both. That's when I noticed that nothing you ever said or did was true. Wasn't it? Crap. Sunny felt a cold shiver run running down his spine. She scoffed. No matter what happened, you somehow always managed to keep your real thoughts, desires, and reasons hidden. I've never seen anyone so adept at deception. Congratulations, Sunny. The mind games you played with us were almost as devious as the mental hex of the soul devourer. It was nothing short of inspiring. Yeah, she doesn't know. He can't lie, but deceiving. 100% he's done all of that. Hello, Max. Welcome. <laughs> Changing Star paused and looked and shook her head. You can even easily turn truths into lies. How brilliant. I never even knew that such a thing was possible. Silly me. I didn't know a lot of things before I met you. She smiled. So, you see, while you were learning how to use a sword from me, I was learning how to use people from you. So please, Sonny, accept my sincere gratitude. I could not have wished for a better teacher. Without you, none of this would have been possible. <laughs> Like, I was learning how to use people from you. Poor Cassie, dude. <laughs> Cassie's so innocent in this. She's like, hey, 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 Neff uses her, you know, for her benefits. I think, like, and, and Sunny does the same. But I think they both, like, kind of like Cassie, though. I'm like, how can you not? She's so sweet. Like, <laughs> she's just nice. If they could, they would have probably both, like, in the beginning, just, like, dis like uh, whatever. Mm. Yeah, she she probably fucking knows. Uh, oh, I got a text from my grandma. Shout out my grandma. She uh, it's her birthday. Yay! Small grandma birthday. <laughs> Nevis raised her hand and stabbed a finger at him. Then, with anger in her voice, she spat. So where do you get the audacity to blame me for doing the same thing you do to everyone you ever meet? Sunny trembled. Was she telling the truth? Did Neff actually learn how to be this manipulative and vile? From him? Oh, no. Someone that inexperienced couldn't have found a worse role model even if they tried. With a cruel twist of fate, to be sent into the dream realm together with a damaged, vicious man like him. Sunny gritted his teeth. That's not the same. Changing Star scowled. How is what I'm doing different? 
I haven't told a single lie to these people. I gave them just enough truth to make them deceive themselves, just like you taught me. But what? Now that it was... Ah, uh, now that it was turned around on you, it is suddenly not fair? Now you won't settle for anything less than the whole truth? She smirked. Fine, I'll tell you. Yes, you are right. There's going to be fire and rivers of blood. That is my plan. So what? How is it worse than this pathetic, hopeless existence? It isn't. I'm going to kill Gunlog. After he is dead, the Bright Castle will become engulfed in a civil war, with each of the five lieutenants vying for the throne. I'm going to kill them too. And when I am the last one standing... Oh my god, dude, she's... Like, I already knew that this is what she meant, but it's like... When she's just like, yes, they will die, they will die, I will kill everyone, there will be civil war! I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> oh my fucking god! Thank you for the grandma birthday wishes, cute. <laughs> oh. Her eyes glistened. I will gather those of us who rem remain alive and make a road of bones for the lucky few to reach the gateway. That is my promise. <laughs> that is the salvation I offered to the people of, of Dark City. A change to return to the real world or die like a human should standing tall and with a sword in their hand, instead of living in fear like a rat. I thought that you, of all people, would understand. In a way, yes. <laughs> if it's anyone who would understand, it would be him. But it's all, like, but he seems like, because uh, cause he's like, fuck everyone, I'm the only one who matters. But now he's more like, that's how he was in the beginning, in the first nightmare. But now he seems more like, what? people are people it's like huh and now we know that like in the future because this is the past so in the current timeline i guess in the whatever we're gonna go back to after this then he's all like fuck everyone i'm happy being alone but then he's also insane so <laughs> <clears throat> i understand what she means <laughs> but it's still wrong but I get it, right? But it's wrong. Don't do this. I don't condone this. I think it makes sense for Sonny to feel that way about slum rats. If anything, true. He has been a lot like, oh, this is like it was at home. Blah, blah. But we don't know. Like, I don't know if he fucking cared about those people back then either. To be honest. But yeah. Sunday stared at her in disbelief. How could, how could she be so nonchalant about the idea of causing the deaths of so many people? Had their lives, had their lives no value in her eyes? I also have to say that I think it's mostly shocking that he's like, oh my god, she's like this. I'm supposed to be like this, not her. Kind of thing like he, like his view of her, shattered. Uh, in a way, like in a sense, somewhat. You know, he's like, no, not my precious Nephis. She's not evil. <laughs> type of thing. And now she's like, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> and that probably isn't easy either. <sighs> mm, exactly, exactly. It's like, imagine if Cassie said this, right? Like, that would have been devastating. <laughs> Cassie's actually like the Dark Lord herself. She's like, yes. <laughs> Like, that would have been... I mean, fuck. <laughs> I don't know, but it's like... I don't think so. Um... <clears throat> the tiny blind dwarf. <laughs> He's actually not blind. Um... Uh, but yeah. This is, this is like Cassie, but like light version, right? It's like, because Neff is like, oh, we already knew that she was like, that she had bloodlust, right? What the fuck? What was that sound? <gasps> Hello! A contradiction. Meowdy. <laughs> Hello there and welcome. We are reading Shadow Slave by Guilty Three. It is a very nice story. You will get spoiled. We are in chapter 167. 
He's giving you a heads up. Now I've said it. <laughs> <clears throat> but feel free to continue. It's nice. <gasps> what is this? <laughs> Cat racer. <laughs> Help. <laughs> you all get spoiled. <laughs> Not from this point on, because I don't know shit. Hello, it's okay. A okay? If it's not, Catrice are fucking multiple accounts. <laughs> but hello to you as well, if you are not. <laughs> Even if it's Catrice again, then hello. Oh, hello. I have friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I'm backing off. Thank you so much for bringing friends. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're all welcome. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Me neither. Ha 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 ha. Um. <laughs> but welcome. Please enjoy your stay. <laughs> Other than this, we play Pokemon and sing sometimes. But not on Thursdays. And Tuesdays, then we do this. <laughs> and this is great. Okay. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. There. But then he realized that he was looking at it all wrong. He was looking at it from his own perspective. The perspective of... The <laughs> perspective? No, my... The perspective of someone who was used to surviving at all costs. To putting survival above all else. However, that was how his old self had viewed the world. After coming to the Fugarden Shore, Sunny had learned that there were things more valuable than staying alive. And he learned it from Nephis. Nef. Well, see, this is like, yeah, because he changed, right? And now it's like, she changed him and now she is like what he was. So he's like, no. Nah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, it's obvious. I don't even know why I'm explaining, but still... To her, a life that was not worth living was that much worse than a worthy death. Death, Maybe in her mind, she really was trying to help these people. I think so. But who gave her the right to make the decision on their behalf? Shaking his head, he whispered. Is it really so terrible to live here? Is Gunlog really so bad that you would rather see all of us die than let us remain under his rule? A dark expression appeared on Changing Star's face. With cold contempt ringing in her voice, she said, Gunlog has done many despicable things, but I won't judge him for those. Who knows if any of us would have done any better? Keeping a thousand hopeless people alive in this hell is the kind of task that can turn a saint into a demon. No, there is only one crime he committed that I can never forgive. Okay. Sunny raised an eyebrow. Which one? She lowered her shin and gritted her teeth. It's that he gave up. Oh, to reach the gateway. Really? Has he given up, though? We don't know that. <clears throat> Maybe he just sees it. Maybe. I don't know. She looked at Sunny and said, her voice full of intensity. It's that he never even tried to reach the gateway. With so many years to prepare and hundreds of powerful fighters under his command, do you really think that there was nothing he could do to enter the Crimson Spire? No. No, he simply changed his mind. Why return if he can live like a king here, in the Dark City? He abandoned his duty as an Awakened and submitted to the spell. Little Bagel! I'm Little Bagel! We know we're Little Bagel, I've seen that name. I don't know where, but I have. Why do I... Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for the follow, little bagel. So cute. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. What is this, Cat Racer? <laughs> I'm starting to panic. I'm still going to say, though. Thank you, it's say okay for the follow. I appreciate it so much. And thank you also, A, a Contradiction. <laughs> a Contradiction for the follow. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> you were sent here from Catrix. Catrix are sent here. <laughs> oh 
What the fuck is this? <laughs> it feels like I'm being raided, but like weirdly. <laughs> they send their regards. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, this is nice. Once again, we're reading Shadow Slave. Chapter 167. You will get spoiled. <laughs> Heads up. Do what you want with that information. <clears throat> but thank you. Thank you for the follows. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Where was I? There. And because of how he reigned, destroying people before they grew powerful enough to threaten his rule, Gunlock also prevented anyone else from trying. <clears throat> My voice is dying. <laughs> there we go. However, Sunny glimpsed something else from what Nephis had said. A hint of her true motivation. The words she chose to condemn Gunlock were just too peculiar. Despite the fact that the Bright Lord had committed all sorts of atrocious acts and caused the deaths, humiliations, and sorrow of countless people, the thing that enraged Changing Star the most was not his corruption and cruelty, but something entirely different. The fact that he had submitted to the spell and failed to complete his trial, considering which family she hailed from. Was this the key to our mysterious goal? Frowning, Sunny asked. Wait, I have to die again. <coughs> Revived? Don't you think that... Maybe. He just wasn't willing to see hundreds of people die. All these young men and women living in the outer settlement and the Bright Castle. How many of them are you ready to sacrifice to achieve your goal? He grew silent, afraid that her answer would confirm his suspicion. I'm scared too. Neff straightened her back and glanced at him. Once again, her eyes were firm and calm. Without pausing to think, she said, not a shadow of a doubt in her voice. All of them, of course. All of them! She's gonna kill all of them. Not, well, in a way, she's fine with that. I mean, I sh we shouldn't be too surprised at this point because, like, during the whole time that we known her in the Forgotten Realm, all she said is, like, I have one thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the fuck out. Like, that that's all, so... <sighs> hmm. So it's not- it's nothing new in a sense, but that she straight up says, like, yeah, all of them can die. <laughs> oh. Dead set. <clears throat> I'm so sorry for my fucking bad throat today. <laughs> um, they're NPCs. <laughs> you gotta. Not Effie. Not Effie. Effie's not an NPC. I like her. Don't kill her. She's like the only one <laughs> that we know. <sighs> she, pro probably she is hurt now though. I'm scared. I'm scared. Okay. <sighs> Chapter one hundred and sixty-eight. Outside. <clears throat> Sunny grimaced and turned away, feeling a terrible headache. The sun was almost gone and the night was following in its, in its footsteps. He didn't have much time left. With a desperate smile, Sunny looked at Changing Star and asked, What can be so damn important? What can be so valuable that you are ready to condemn everyone here to death? He shook his head, guessing that he already knew. Don't tell me that it's some stupid crap like bringing the glory of the immortal flame clan back, duty of the awakened, 
What, you gave a terrible oath to become the first human to conquer the fourth nightmare like your father conquered the third and your grandfather the second? Or even worse, is it something even more foolish? Are you planning to save the damn world? Nephi stared at him for a few moments and then grinned. Something dangerous and unfamiliar awakened in her eyes. No, not completely unfamiliar. It was the same strange, maniacal, ma maniac, ma maniacal, <laughs> crazy glimmer he had seen once before, right after saying the three strange words to her. Aster, Song, Veil. Vale. Back then, for a few moments, Changing Star had turned from a calm and composed young woman into someone he wasn't sure he recognized anymore. With a soft chuckle, Neff shook her head. Save the world? No, I'm not going to save the world, Sunny. Then the smile disappeared from her face, and white flames suddenly ignited in the depths of her cold gray eyes. With dark and frightening conviction, she said, I'm going to destroy it. <laughs> save the world, my final message. <laughs> bling, bling. <laughs> Oh, the best video. Okay. Um, oh, she's gonna destroy the world. Fucking go, Neff. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Her voice echoed in the darkness, making Sunny feel an irrational feeling of dread. He stared at her, both failing compre to comprehend and afraid to believe in what she had just heard. He had just heard. Hello, James. World is overrated anyway. You can't argue with that. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Destroy the world? What? Deeply inhaling the cool air, Shinshin Star looked up, looked up at the sky. This world, Sunny. This cursed place. The dream realm. No, I won't be the first one to conquer the fourth nightmare. I will be the first one to conquer every nightmare. I'll go through them one after another, destroying anything and anyone who stands in my way. And when I get to the heart of the nightmare spell, I'm going to obliterate every part of it. I'm going to rip it to shreds. I'm going to decimate and bring it to ruin. <laughs> I mean, when I hear that, I was like... Is that a bad thing? <laughs> Is it bad to destroy the nightmare spell? Isn't that good? You know? But the way she does it... Mm, but, I mean... If someone said, like, I can destroy a nightmare spell. Okay, like, fucking do it. <laughs> Who is the protagonist again? Sunny! And he's a good one! She looked him in the eyes and said, You think Gunlog can stop me? You think a fallen terror can stop me? <clears throat> Those three ghouls can stop me? No, Sonny. Nothing will stop me. Anyone who dares will die. I'll kill them all. <laughs> Spell is pretty much keeping the world on life support from what I know. What? It does? But it infects people with the... With the nightmare thing. I guess I don't know enough yet. Okay. <sighs> Taking a step back, Sunny stared at her with wide eyes. He shivered, feeling something cold touch the back of his neck. Then he grimaced and asked, a hint of anguish in his voice. Why? Why do you want to destroy the spell so much? A corner of Changing Star's mouth curled up slightly. After a few moments, she, sim she simply said, Because I hate it. Sunny blinked, stunned by the simplicity of that answer. If it was someone else, he would have thought that they were lying. I'm going to turn off my phone's sound. Okay, hold on, it's something work related. Give me a second. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, yeah, that's true. They did say that. That they used the Dream Realm for energy and shit. That has been said. True, 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 true. You're right. That's also true. Okay. Uh, the they were lying. But Nevis lived in a strange, stark world. She did things simply because she wanted to, and apparently wanted to destroy an eternal, omnipotent existence simply because she hated it. Why the hell not? He closed his eyes and whispered, You're actually insane. Nev smiled. What does it mean to be insane in a world that has gone mad? <laughs> That's what an insane person says! <laughs> I would be wary of anyone who remained perfectly sane in this hell. Also true. Then, she sighed. So, are we done here, or do you have more questions? The sun is almost gone, so you'd better hurry up and ask them. Sunny shook his head and said, his voice hoarse. Yeah. Yeah, Nef, I'm done. Nef, our insane queen. <laughs> With that, he slowly turned around and took a step forward. Left behind, Nephis frowned. Where are you going? Come back here. <laughs> he waved a hand and said in a suppressed tone, refusing to turn his head. Sorry, I have an errand to run. We'll talk some other time. Her frown deepened. Looking at his back, Changing Star gritted her teeth and called. I said come back, Sonny. This conversation isn't over. Come back here right now. Sonny, come back. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy the world, Sonny. Why don't you have any more questions for me? Hmm? Ah, <laughs> oh, the same mind. Look at that. <laughs> I got a body to bury. Sorry, I got a bad body to bury. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, Agron, welcome. You has arrived. Sharing a brain cell. <laughs> the single one. <laughs> oh. But there was no answer. God. It might have been. I'm sorry, I didn't have um, sound when I was there. I groaned because I, I was at work. <laughs> Sunny had already disappeared into the shadows, leaving her standing alone in the alley that was brightly lit by the last light of the dying sunset. I guess that this is the last time he sees her before he sees uh, her now in the castle. That's why he didn't answer. I'm sorry, did you ask questions? <laughs> I just like, I just had it up. Support. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this is probably the last time he, he sees her crazy okay yes I figured keep it up <laughs> sometime later Sunny was walking through the ruins Harper's dead body weighing on his shoulder the young man was a very gaunt back before he had been killed, so he wasn't much of a burden. Physically, at least. It was the early hour of the night. Surrounded by nothing but darkness, Sunny was left alone with his thoughts and emotions. But strangely, both his heart and mind were empty. He couldn't be bothered to think or feel anything right now. It was all just too much and too sudden. Plus, he would much rather concentrate on the stumbling on some hor <sighs> he would much rather concentrate on not stumbling on some horrific monster. Ending up eaten by a nightmare creature right now would be very ironic, but still unpleasant. He felt guilty about murdering Harper, but not enough to die. <laughs> but not that much. <laughs> but not enough to die while trying to dispose of the body. He would much prefer not to die for his sins. Luckily, the area he was traversing was familiar to Sunny. He knew which streets were comparatively safe and which he needed to avoid. Where the really horrible monsters lived and where he could pass without being sensed by anything. 
Finally, judging that he was far away in the ruins, he found a partially collapsed house, climbed over the rubble, then hesitated for a few moments and threw the corpse inside. Harper's gaunt body rolled down the rocks and disappeared into the interior of the house, where no one would ever see it. Here. Done. That part, at least, was finished. Why did he just get a fucking toss a body in the house and be like, Yep! That's it! <laughs> like, what the fuck? What the- He's not gonna bury him? He's not gonna do anything? <laughs> I'm empty! I saw that you were on the YouTube stream. Hello on the YouTube stream. Mission accomplished! All done here! Nothing to see! No one will ever find him here! <sighs> no, not to die. <laughs> Oh, you're already on holiday. Enjoy your holidays. I have next week left. And then one more day the week after. And no holidays. But like... <laughs> but long weekends. So that's pretty nice. I guess I... Yeah, because I'm only working one day the week after that. But... Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say like... I thought his idea was like, oh, a nightmare creature or whatever is gonna fucking eat him, so it's fine. But it's like, still, a deer, like, just toss him in a house. <laughs> it's like, oh, a, a broken house. <laughs> oh, perfect. Bye. <laughs> Hope someone eats you, kind of thing. Eh. It was time to go back. Okay, <laughs> that's literally what he... <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he was sleepy. He doesn't know the area. He just wandered and then he slept on a knife. Yeah! <laughs> That's what I'm imagining, Tech. Okay, it's time to go back now, I guess. Work done. Sunny turned around and stared at the distant silhouette of the tall hill, with the magnificent castle standing on its top. Right now, hundreds of people were sleeping there, either in the pitiful hovels of the outer settlement or in the safe and warm rooms of the ancient stronghold. Neff, Cassie, and Effie were there. Harris, Gemma, and Gunlog the Bright Lord was there too, and many, many others, and most of them were going to die. Looking at the white marble walls of the castle, Sunny could see his future vividly. Watching helplessly as Changing Star builds her sect, Helping her defend herself from Gunlog. Going on hunts, being invisible once he comes back. Afraid to get close to anyone, lest the same thing that happened to Harper repeats itself. Up until the moment everything ends in bloodshed and terror. Castor was there too, waiting to use his leverage over Sunny to make him his obedient minion. Sunny wasn't deceived by the amiable personality of the handsome legacy. He knew that nothing good was going to come of accepting his help. In the end, he just stood in the shadows and looked into the distance, at the tiny human enclave that persevered that persevered against all odds in the cursed nightmare of the Forgotten Shore like a lone glimmer of light. I think burying is not a thing in the future. Ah, oh, still, <laughs> there should be a nightmare spell religion or cult in the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Burying is not a thing. <gasps> Kato! Kato! Oh, I thought about you this week. I was gonna message you. <laughs> Hello! I hope you've been doing good. You're very welcome back. Yes, you haven't been in a while. Oh. <laughs> Hello! The fuck did Agron just sub? <laughs> the raccoon like saying you sub. <laughs> you subbed. <laughs> but Twitch didn't. Thank you, I think. <laughs> Welcome back, person. Ah, nice caliber. Good job. <laughs> Kate is here. Oh, I hope you've been doing good. Hello. We're reading Shadow Slave today, as you can tell. Welcome back. There it is! 
nice message. Let's hear it. He 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 chibi chaba chibi chaba. <laughs> thank you so much, Dragon, for the resub. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there, the official one was. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. The reading shall continue. Everyone will die. Oh. <gasps> After remaining motionless for a long time, Sunny quietly sighed, turned his back to it, and slowly walked into the darkness. Oh, this is where he leaves and goes crazy. <gasps> I think the <gasps> the fucking time skip is over then. It should be. <gasps> and Guilty Three said, "End of part one. A graveyard of hope." Ah! That was part one. Graveyard of hope. Nice! Mm. Okay. We should be back to the present time. No more time skips, please. I don't get it. But it wasn't as bad as I hoped. I, I hoped as I thought it would be, but still. I think this is part one of like act two, you know? I don't know what he... He didn't call them parts, I think. Mm, volume 2. Yes, that's what it's called. Books. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Manti. So yeah, this is the uh, end of part 1, volume 2. That's insane. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Fuck you making progress. <laughs> Okay, we're almost 13% percent, pr 13% done. <laughs> he constantly updates this shit as well, which is amazing, but also makes our progress not as fast. <laughs> but I will do it, I will do it. Okay, now we'll continue. Ah! <sighs> he. Chapter 169. Back to the future. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> he did it. He did it. He said it. He said it. It's official. Back to the future. <laughs> Let's go. No more time skip. Best movies. Okay. Oh, good. Slow down, please. <laughs> I mean, don't. Like, please finish it. I just want it to be complete. Right? Shaft 169, Back to the Future is such a name. <laughs> That's a title. It was the name of the chapter. Amazing. I'm so happy. Okay. Okay. Three months later, Sunny was back at the castle. Okay, so basically now, right? We've met Kai with, with everything. We've been insane. Sunny's insane now. We we met a extremely handsome, fabulous um, man named Kai who can fly. And he's an archer. And he's our friend. And he's like, oh my god. Kind of not friend. We're going to use him. And he's going to buy memories for us. Uh, with our shards because he has so many fucking shards, Sunny, right? Because he's just been slaying fucking left and right nightmare creatures like a fucking crazy person. And, uh, uh Shadow. <laughs> he and Shadow doesn't talk anymore. Kinda. Uh, oh, and uh, Sunny has also gained a new uh, Echo, which is a stone. <laughs> Saint, yes, thank you. Stone Saint, uh, which is also fucking crazy. And Stone Saint fucking takes all the memories and just like smashes them in her chest. And now she's like, Ugh. um, yeah, yeah, because he, yeah, 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 because he turned the the Stone Saint into a, into a shadow thing. Uh, consumes memories, so Kai has to go buy memories for us because we don't want to enter the castle, obviously. Yeah, cause Neff is there, but now we did, and Neff was like, "Hi, Sunny," and we're like, "Shit!" So we just saw Neff is. I think they are people sized, but I thought it was like you know a bit bigger. He's like a tall, muscular 
woman rock. <laughs> I think she's taller, but you know, not like like a tall human, like damn, you know, like two meters <laughs> or something. He's a shirt king. <laughs> Uh, but like, it's like to sum it up real quick, that's basically what has happened. And he's lived in a little, a little room where a princess once lived, I think, with princess clothes in the closets or whatever. And he's killed more people, by the way, because he killed Kai's um, capturers. Not all of them, I think. Did he kill all of them? So he is. Uh, he has more blood on his hands. Um Well he he did. He killed it. <laughs> he killed them. Stop it. He he <laughs> killed them. Um Technically <laughs> Well that's basically where what happened in between what we just read and to where we are now. But we've already read all that, obviously, so if you want to recap, there are VODs on YouTube. Please look at them. They're nice and fun. <laughs> okay, well now we're back in the castle. <clears throat> well, to be precise, he had returned here once before to buy a few items that were hard to come by in the ruins. However, back then, Nevis and her cohort had been away on a hunt. No such luck today. The moment he had been dreading for so long was finally here. Hearing Changing Star's voice, Sunny slowly turned around, glanced at her, and forced out a smile. Hey, Neff. Long time no see. <laughs> we're back, we're back. I can't... Ah, okay. He tried to sound casual, but a slight tremble betrayed the storm of emotions raging in his heart. Why did she have to be here? Nice and fun. That's one way to describe the story. It's nice and fun. <laughs> oh, and Sunny's in love with Kai. Anyway, uh, the turmoil of... <laughs> At least in my mind. The turmoil of their sudden meeting was exasperated by the fact of how different they looked. The past months only made Nephis appear more radiant and splendid. Her white armor was pristine and graceful, her silver hair clean and combed. Sunny, on the other hand, looked like a pile of dirt that had somehow come to life. <laughs> Both he and the puppeteer Shroud had seen better days. K-pop bird man. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I can guess. I can. I. I can assume pretty hard, but I don't. <laughs> I read <mean> this. <laughs> this is enough. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I'm being bullied. Oh, boys love. That's what it means. I looked it up. <laughs> I think I... Have I ever... Thinking honestly here. Hmm. What do you think it means? Well, I, I understood kind of. Like... I knew what theme we were talking, but... Hmm. I don't think I ever have. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. There was... Because, okay. I usually went... Uh, back in the days, I usually went to this one, like, manga reading site. I don't remember what the fuck it's called. It's probably dead by now. But uh, most of them have, like, random buttons. Right? And then I think one... I was like... It was short, because when you get random, you, like, there's some shit there. Like, there are, like, a, it feels like a million fucking different ones. I read one that had, like, two shafts or some shit, and I was like, eh, like, <laughs> edgy level, okay, but that's, if, if, if even at this point. It was just, like, it was cute. I was like, oh, <laughs> and that was it. And that is, like, no, I've never 
boots into that. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking. Anyway, um... Right? So you should have known. If you would have told me, like, yaoi, and then I would have known. <laughs> no, no, I'm stopping, please. <laughs> this is it. Okay, done. Enough. <laughs> That's a weird roundabout. No, I'm not saying yes. I'm saying no. I said, okay. Yes, I read one once from what I remember. I don't even know if it was just two chapters. If I ever just read two chapters and stopped. Because I'm like, no. I don't like... <laughs> My sip was too big. I'm dying. Okay, small. <laughs> Short answer? Yes, I guess. Long answer? No. Continuing to read this. Shut up. <laughs> the term left her Scottish puppetry of better days. <clears throat> he didn't want to see her. But even more than that, he didn't want her to see him in this in this sorry state. What if Neff gets the ridiculous idea that he was somehow miserable after falling out with her? <laughs> I can't continue. <laughs> I have to get my shit together. <clears throat> Nonsense. He was doing better than ever. He lived in a palace, ate delicious food every day, and had even become incredibly wealthy. If anyone should be miserable, it would be her. You do realize that you said that out loud, do you? Sunny blinked, remembered where he was, and stared at Changing Star in shock. Huh? <laughs> what? She smiled with the corner of her mouth. She just zoned out and mumbled. Why did she have to be here? Under your breath. That was not very polite. Ooh. Damn. Okay. Sonny hid his embarrassment behind a grin and said, Yeah, well, I meant it. Neff sighed. I'm glad to see you too, Sonny. It's good that you're alive. <laughs> so I can kill you. <laughs> Myself. In battle. Trying to conceal his discomfort, he shrugged. What, you didn't expect me to survive without you? She looked at him for a while and slightly shook her head. No. On the contrary, I knew that you would be fine. Then she paused for a moment and added in a flat tone. After all, a cockroach like you is not easy to kill. <laughs> Sunny scoffed. Now who's being polite? Now who's being impolite? Neffa stared at him in confusion for a couple of moments, then chuckled. Oh, sorry. I meant it as a compliment. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. Oh. He was glad to see Neff too. As much as Sunny wanted to deny it, he had desperately missed her calm presence. Somewhere along the way, without even noticing, he had grown real... Reliant on having her by her... <laughs> he had grown reliant on having her by his side. But meeting her was also a nightmare. After all, knowing ha nothing had really changed after their bitter quarrel. Even though the intensity of it all diminished, the future that Cassie had foretold was still inevitable. Now that the initial shock of running into Changing Star disappeared, Sunny took a closer look at her. Nevis looked... stronger. He didn't know how much soul essence she had been able to absorb while he was gone, but it seemed like it was a lot. Neff was always confident and arresting, but now her pres presence grew to a completely new level. But then again, it was not the same weak fool either. The Dark City had made him into a fearsome creature as well. The months he had spent hunting monsters in the absolute darkness of the cursed ruins turned him stronger, smarter, and much more deadly. If a little bit insane. 
Sunny doubted that any human on the Forgotten Shore had killed as many powerful nightmare creatures as he had in the same amount of time. At least not in single combat. Don't go on a tangent and forget what you are... <laughs> Don't go on a tangent and forget where you are again. With a flinch, Sunny realized that he had been silent for a long time. An awkward silence hung between them, threatening to make him look bad. Just a bit. <laughs> Just a tiny bit, it's a bit insane. Just a little bit. <laughs> sure. Uh, I need to say something like, how have you been? No, that's a stupid question. How about... However, before he could speak, Nephis asked. So what brings you to the Bright Castle? Are you... Are you back? Startled, he scratched the back of his head and scrambled to find an answer. Oh, you know, just doing some shopping. She blinked. Shopping? Wait, did that sound weird? Sunny's eyes widened. Wait, did I say that out loud again? He slapped his mouth shut and looked at Changing Star in horror. God damn it! He knew that a habit of talking to myself would be so detrimental to keeping my dignity intact. <laughs> oh my god, he says because he's talking to <laughs> because he's talked to himself this whole time. He just says everything out loud. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my god. On the ground next to him, the shadow was having a swell time basking in its anguish. It was shaking its head and dying laughing. Several seconds later, Sunny was finally able to speak again. Uh, yeah, shopping. I have some soul shards to spare, so I wanted to buy a memory. Or a few. Nevis looked at him for a while, then said, I see. Then she turned away and asked, her voice calm and even, as always. Do you go? <laughs> Do you go? <laughs> Do you want to go somewhere and talk? Oh. Sunny's heart skipped a beat. <laughs> skipped a bit, okay. He gritted his teeth. Sorry, no can do. I'm uh waiting for someone. Ooh <laughs> Neff I've met someone. <laughs> oh Changing Star lingered for a few moments, then asked You're hiding in that alley because you're waiting for someone? Who are you waiting for, Sonny? <laughs> he waved a hand. Oh, you know, a friend. That's not a lie. He's a lace a friend. <laughs> Make her jealous and reject him. <laughs> well, more like an associate, really. An acquaintance? Okay, fine. Never remained silent for a few moments, then said in an even tone. You can't just say no. No need to invent some. But right at that moment, an enchanting voice came from the entrance of the alley. Sunny? Hey, are you here? Oh my god, it's Kai! <laughs> if he sees Neff and be like, Oh my gosh, she's beautiful, then I'm gonna die. Ugh. Okay. <sighs> Turning around. <laughs> Why is he K-pop? What the fuck? Oh yeah, because wait, she he oh right, right, because he mentioned oh he talked nonstop and he fucking mentioned didn't he mention a K-pop band or some shit? Was that or was that was that us? I can't remember if that was real or not. <laughs> Cause I looked it up. I swear to God, I did. I guess so. I guess so. Okay. <sighs> Turning around, Sunny saw a beautiful young man with gorgeous auburn hair and mesmerizing green eyes enter the alley. He was wearing an armor made out of burnished brown leather and blue silk clothes beneath, all of which fit him perfectly. <laughs> On his face, there was a bright smile. It was Kai. Knight. Whatever his name was. Sunny exhaled with relief. What do you mean, invent? See, he's right. However, the words died on his lips, because when he turned to Changing Star, he saw something that he had never seen before. Looking at the young man, whom he had set free from the bottomless dark well, Nevis took a step back. Her face was pale, and her eyes were wide and glassy. She seemed to be consumed by absolute, utter horror. <gasps> oh! <gasps> 
He was already attracted to spell off creating that further. Yeah, st but still. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. X. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, I'm gonna die if that. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm scared. I thought I heard a beeping sound. I'm extremely scared now. I don't know if that was my voice or if it was actually a beeping sound. Now I'm scared. I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm dating your ex now. You got your ex from a friend. <laughs> nephew. Ah, nephew. I see autocorrect. I get that. <laughs> got your ex from a well. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he? She's scared. If it's her ex, I'm gonna die. No, that's no way. No way. He doesn't. She doesn't have time for that shit. Fuck that. Everyone's gonna die. No way. No. I want it to be true. I really do. But there's no way. Nah. <laughs> if anything, he he. <sighs> Because we only know that he was in the well because he had a map, right? And they were like, oh, want that map. That's what I remember. <sighs> he is rich. Mm. Oh, yeah, maybe that was the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I did the wrong way around. Oh, okay, let's continue. <sighs> Chapter 170. Star crossed. <laughs> Sunny had never seen Nephis show fear before. Not to mention being truly horrified. Instantly, every muscle in his body tensed and a cold shiver ran through it. It can't be. It can't be. Oh, we're in Neff's head now? No way, please. Okay, no, we're not. He's a little bit. Okay. She was a person who faced demons and fearsome abominations without even flinching. What could scare her so much? That was Sunny thoughts like, oh, no way. She's scared. Okay. Was he mistaken? Was Kai an incarnation of some primordial evil after all? How could this be? Panicking, he turned back to face the charming young man and outstretched one arm, and outstretched one arm, ready to summon the midnight shard. Not that it would help if even changing star was scared, but to his surprise, Kai wasn't showing any signs of being an ancient terror. <laughs> In fact, he was looking at him with a cute expression of confusion. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sunny, who is your friend? No, it didn't make any sense. Not only was Sunny sure of his judgment, he had also seen multiple people greeting Knight as though they knew and liked him. He couldn't be a nightmare creature. Then what was wrong with Nevis? <laughs> Keeping his shadow's gaze on the charming archer, Sunny slowly turned back and glanced at Changing Star. She was still standing there, seemingly paralyzed by fear. What was going on? Uh, Neff? She flinched and tore her eyes away from Kai. After a few seconds, Changing Star cautiously leaned forward and whispered, Sunny, what is Knight doing here? He frowned. He's the friend I was telling you about. She lingered and shook her head. No, I mean, what is he doing here? Emphasis was on the word here. Why isn't he in the well that I sent him to? <laughs> Where else would he be? Completely lost, Sunny struggled to understand what was going on. Maybe she knew something about the kidnapping. That didn't make sense. Finally, he said, I saved his life in the ruins, so he's doing me a favor in return. Nephi stared at him with desperation, then shook her head again. No, I mean, what is Knight doing here? On the forgotten shore? Ha! Huh? Sunny scowled. Did you guys know each other in the real world? No way, because he was like, who's your friend? Huh? Nephis looked at him with a funny expression. She opened her mouth and closed it again. Finally, she forced herself to speak. You... You don't know who he is. Oh. 
<laughs> oh my god, okay. <sighs> Fucking what? Meanwhile, Kai, who was politely staying silent through this whole weird conversation, smiled dastingly and said, He really doesn't. Isn't it wonderful? Sunny gave him a dark look. How would I know who he is? Make sense, please. Neff was silent for a while, then loudly whispered, That's Knight, you idiot! Knight from Nightingale! The Knight! <laughs> what was she going on about? He had no idea what that meant. Sunny rubbed his face with irritation. What are you talking about? What is a Nightingale? Nevis looked at Kai, paled even more, and finally said in a small voice, It's only the best and most famous idol group of the last decade. Triple Orpheus winners, 100 consecutive weeks at the top of all charts, six diamond albums, albums, that, that Nightingale, that night, the lead vocalist. <laughs> <laughs> He is actually a K-pop idol. What the fuck? Oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Why? No. No. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. She doesn't have to be a fan. I, she probably is, but it's like... I mean, I, I, it seems like everyone knows him. But Sunny doesn't since he lives in slums, so... <sighs> Sunny simply stared. Wait. <laughs> Are you telling me? Was she so out of it because Kai used to be a member of some stupid boy band in the past? <laughs> That's why he asked so much about music. Oh my god. Oh. Changing Star was not horrified. She was starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was. She was. 100% it was him. Oh. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. He remained silent for a while and then exploded into laughter. Gods, oh gods, Nevis is a fangirl! What the spell? That's so funny. What the spell? <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, when they first met, she had been wearing headphones the whole time. He should have realized that Neff was into music much earlier. What? <laughs> what? Someone's wearing headphones. Oh my god, that person's into music. Fucking what? Okay. Ugh. Mighty and stoic changing star. Brought down by dainty idol boy. So are you, Sunny. Sunny, don't deny. <laughs> that was just too hilarious. He wasn't even jealous. What were the chances of meeting her bias and oh my god, they're using bias. Oh, oh what happened? What happened? We just killed a man. <laughs> She just said that she's gonna kill everyone and destroy the world, and now we're like, oh my god, K-pop idol, that's her bias. <laughs> that was months ago. Oh, true, true. What was it? Three? Three months? Six months? My fucking god. <sighs> Okay. What were the chances of meeting her bias in the damn dark city? You couldn't come up with that crap. <laughs> <laughs> what does being insane mean in a world gone bad? Oh my god, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Perfect use of the cost. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. As he was dying from laughter, both Changing Star and Kai glared at him with difficult expressions. However, Sunny just couldn't stop. His laughter only died down after he began wheezing. Sorry, sorry, I just didn't expect it from you. <laughs> oh gods, as for your question, Knight has been here for about two and a half years. He lives in the castle. Never seemed thoughtful for a few moments, then glanced at Kai with wide eyes. Two and a half years? But, but I thought... 
that Nightingale was just on hiatus because of Gail's solo project. <sighs> Are we really do? Like, is this happening? <laughs> is this happening? <laughs> Oh, oh, there's Gail too. I can't even. <laughs> Kai smiled apologetically. I'm afraid not. I have indeed spent all this time here in the dark city. My agency had to come up with some cover story, I guess. With how things are, they can't even spin things and release a posthumous, posthumous album. Poor guys. You know, since I'm not technically dead or even hollow, just asleep. Neff gave him a shy nod. Oh. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to remove the awkward atmosphere, Kai offered her another smile. Oh my god. By the way, it's so nice to meet another friend of Sunny's. What a surprise! I thought that he was a complete... Uh, a solitary person. I'm sorry, but I didn't catch your name. Was it Neff? <laughs> She's gonna die. Looking at him, Sunny grinned. Then he cleared his throat and said in a relaxed tone. Oh right, I forgot to introduce you. Sorry, my bad. Knight, this is Nephis. Although these days she goes by another name. You might have heard it. Meet Changing Star of the Immortal Flame Clan. Now, it was Kai's turn to stare at Neph with horror. The corner of his eye twitched. However, perhaps due to his idol training, he managed to hide his emotions much faster. Blinking a few times, he lingered for a moment, and then said in his smooth, enchanting voice. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, my lady. I have have heard so much about you. It's an honor. <laughs> Nephis turned away, trying to hide a hint of blush in her cheeks. <laughs> Staring at the wall of the alley, she hesitated, then awkwardly said, So, uh... Your friend is already here, Sunny. Can we go have a talk now? She glanced at him and added a bit of hesitation. I have something important to discuss with you. It's a matter of life and death. <laughs> of life and death, hmm? Hmm. I see. I feel like... I'm being drained. <laughs> I'm being drained. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we'll continue, of course, but damn. Damn. Okay. Chapter 171 Tether The chapter was enjoyable I just looked up nightingales and most of the pictures are of them screaming <laughs> Isn't it a bird? Yeah, the bird <laughs> What if I search K-pop? <laughs> Nightingale K-pop. The Nightingales. 2021. What the fuck? Oh, this seems to be something else. Is it like a... Um, it's a song, I think. Oh, fuck. Whatever. No, I'm not even gonna... Oh. Hello, Dark is here. Oh, he's... A You're there. Hello. Sorry, I can't read the chat a lot. <laughs> and Horus. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome. I know that there are birds, Ira. <laughs> and he can't fly. <laughs> that is true. Oh my god. Okay. Ah, uh, continuing. He is a bird. 
Chapter 171. Tether. Bird drill. <laughs> Sunny blinked a couple of times, digesting her words. A matter of life and death. If Nephis, if Nephis used these words, the situation was indeed dire. She was not someone to throw words to the wind. However, she was also not to be trusted. No matter how Sunny, how much Sunny wanted for things between them to go... <sighs> No matter how much Sunny wanted for things between them to go to the way they had been before, he knew that it was impossible. There was no way back for either of them. Sunny knew the true face of Changing Star now. He had seen the endless force of her conviction. In the flaming white inferno of her soul, all things were reduced to ash. Human concepts like loyalty, mercy, and affection had no hope of escaping that annihilation. No matter what bonds connected them, Sunny could not trust Nephis to put them above her boundless obsession. If push came to shove, she would sacrifice anything, or anyone, to achieve her goal, including him. At least, that was what he believed. What's more, despite the fact that she tried to hide it, Sunny could feel that Nephis' demeanor towards him had changed as well. He couldn't tell how exactly but there was something almost imperceptibly different about how she looked at him. Once broken, trust was not easy to put back. Perhaps it was simply impossible. Probably. <laughs> and yet, despite all that, was he really capable of refusing her plea for help? Sunny sighed and closed his eyes for a moment. No. No, he didn't think he was. Where is Cassie? Where is Cassie? Even if things between them became strained, she was still one of the only two people he cared about in this world. The way he felt toward Neff was... was almost like a second flaw. He loves her! No matter how much he wanted to, he just couldn't get rid of it. Somewhere along the way, it had taken root in his soul. Oh, in his soul, the people! He had hoped that it would wither and die if they were a poor, <laughs> a, a port, if they were apart. But instead, it just grew stronger, and now there was no escape from it. Oh my God! Hey yo, mi amo y loco, welcome back. Hope you've been doing good. We're reading. Enjoy the reading. <laughs> Sunny could feel himself being pulled back into the mess of humanity once again. Damn it! This was exactly why he had been reluctant to return here. After suffering so much to leave it all behind, why would he ever want to abandon his peaceful, pleasant, delightful life of solitude? Curses! But he just couldn't refuse Neff. <sighs> However, that didn't mean that he was going to become her compli compliant sidekick again. Even if they were going to work together, they were going to do it on his terms. <laughs> sure. Sure. Focus. You came here to purchase memories to feed for the stone saint. True. Changing Star was looking at him expectantly. Sunny tried to appear confident and casual as, she, as he said. We can have a talk. But not right now. I'll come find you when I'm done with my business. Whatever it was that she wanted to discuss, it could not be extremely urgent. After all, Nephis had no idea that he was going to return from the ruins today. If there was no time to waste, she would not be wasting it on him, logically. Uh, logically. Changing Star was silent for a few moments, her face indifferent. Then finally, she answered in a flat tone. That is fine. You know where to go. Sunny smiled. Oh, and if you don't mind... I'll bring Knight with me. Both of them stared at him with the same doubtful expression. You will? Turning to the charming young man, Sunny pretended to be surprised by his question. Don't you want to meet my other friends? They'll be able to answer all your stupid questions, for sure. Knight hesitated. I guess? Wonderful. What friends? <laughs> Sunny gave him a nod and glanced at Nephis who was clearly wondering if her idol could really be trusted. It's decided then. 
Now, if you'll excuse us. Truth be told, he didn't trust the pretty archer that much either, but his ability to detect lies would come in incredibly handy during the conversation with Changing Star. Right. Right. She was the one and only graduate of Sunny's School of Deception and Lies, after all. Pushing Kai away, he waited until they were at the appropriate distance and asked, So what did you find out about the memories? Soon enough, they were entering the bright castle. Sunny felt strange returning to this splendid, suffocating place. This time he came as a guest of a well-regarded resident not as a slum dweller seeking to exchange his soul shard for a moment of respite from the cold darkness and terror. The guards did glance at him with disdain, but remained passive. <laughs> Stupid conversations in the chat. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Walking under the swingful skulls, they entered the familiar hall of beautiful colored glass windows. The opulent desk that Harper used to sit behind was still there. Only now, a similarly down young woman was scribbling on a piece of parchment instead. The world, they, the world didn't care about the death of one little human. It just moved on, instantly replacing that which was lost. That which was lost. <laughs> Forgetting it. Sunny grimaced. So, you did find me some memories to buy. What are the prices? Kai smiled, gesturing him to follow, and said, I did you one better. I actually managed to get us an invitation to the memory market. Sunny frowned. A what? Never heard of it. The charming young man gave him a nod. That's not surprising. It's a place where you can per peruse various memories and purchase them for an acceptable price. Uh, I say acceptable, but you know... Who has all the shards in this place? So usually, they only let the members of the host in. Made sense. Gunlog would never allow memories to freely circulate among people who did not belong to him. The guards and hunters, though, needed a place to exchange memories that didn't fit their aspects for either shards or something that did. Then how did you get the invitation? Kai shrugged. It's not that hard if you have the shards. Problem is, very few of us free folks do. To Sunny's surprise, they actually entered one of the forbidden areas of the castle. After walking down a few long corridors and going down several flights of stairs, a sturdy wooden door appeared before them. There was a symbol of a sword and shield drawn on it. Winking at him, Knight opened the door and walked inside. Sunny followed. Once he saw the interior of the room, his eyes glistened with excitement. <laughs> I guess that there are a lot of memories. <laughs> That's my guess. Oi. I was gonna say, I was also gonna mention the sword and shield. It's like, <gasps> there's shiny Pokemons inside. <laughs> I need to get them. <laughs> good tech, good. <laughs> You're doing very well. <laughs> Continuing. Oh, I have. I've done this already. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna see if there's more of this. Yeah, I've already done this. I thought. Okay, and then we do this, and then, yeah, <sighs> yeah, bloop, there we go. Boom. Spoon and fork memory is the fame saint. <laughs> no, it's not ending. There was no text, was there? Hmm? Okay. Continuing. 
Chapter 172, Memory Market. Behind the door, there was a medium-sized hall that had no windows. It was illuminated by a strange lantern that levi levitated in its center, radiating a bright and stable glow. Along the walls of the room stood various weapon racks, wooden mannequins dressed in full suits of armor, and tables with a wide assortment of beautiful and intriguing objects placed upon them. All of it, the weapons, the armors, the objects, even the levitating lantern, were memories. Sanif felt a thundering thought explode in his mind. For a few moments, he was only able to think about one thing. Money. That is so much money. Inside this unassuming hall hid a fortune that could rival that of an entire corporation. He was barely stalking, stopping himself from drooling. Uh, Sunny? Brought back from his covetous stupor, Sunny blinked a couple of times and glanced at Kai. Huh? The beautiful archer hesitated for a, mo mo moment, a moment, then said, I was saying, this is Stev. He is in charge of this place. Only now did Sunny notice that there was someone else in the room. It was a man that was old by the standards of the Dark City, nearing 25 or so. <sighs> okay. He had a round face and cheerful eyes, which was currently full of doubt and hints of dis disgust. His gaze, of course, was aimed at Sunny. Have you looked in the mirror, bastard? Apart from his extremely tall stature, there was one other speci special thing about Stev's appearance, and it was that he was fat. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and... Ha! Huh? He, he was the first obese person that Sunny had met in the Dark City. Aw, oh, food. Right. Maybe it's a flaw. <laughs> Having a belly like that in a place like this must have required a lot of work, talent, dedication. He didn't know whether to be impressed or appalled. What the fuck? In any case, Sunny decided to not get on Stev's bad side. He wouldn't want to get eaten by this ogre after all. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sunny, Sunny. Chill out. Uh, nice to meet you, Stev. I'm Sunny. The ample giant looked down at him, then glanced at Kai, and said in a strange voice, Knight, my dear friend, are you sure this dirty vagrant is a customer? Sunny frowned. Be civil. Be civil. Hey, fat bastard, are you sure that this dirty vagrant won't break every bone in that fat blob you have for a body? Oh my god. What the fuck just happened? I said, chill, Sunny. This is not chill. This is very far from chill. What the fuck? Huh? Okay. <sighs> Sunny is crazy. Vlogging me in, dude. <laughs> in the dead silence, both Kai and Stev stared at him with wide eyes. Then, Stav leaned back and let out a thunderous laugh. Oh, good, good. He's a homie. <laughs> this little gremlin is a funny one. Night. Well, good. Very good. If there's one thing I like in the cave, it's entertainment. Shuckling, he shook his head and said, Still, my goods aren't cheap, my dear friend. Uh, Sunny? Oh, I even remembered my name. <laughs> my, uh, his name. Shh. A good memory will cost you a dozen shards, at least. Much more if you want something really useful. Are you sure you have the means to shop here in my emporium? How many shards can a slum rat like you have? Sunny blinked. I think there was a misunderstanding. Have you seen me? Do I look like someone who would ever be able to buy something from you? Of course not. I've never even absorbed a single soul shard. That should tell you how many of them I have. Kai gave him a strange look. Because of how confident Sunny had been while traversing the ruins, he must have assumed that his companion was sufficient, suffocantly powerful. However, now he suddenly learned that Sunny had never absorbed any soul essence. With his ability to sense lies, the charming archer would know that it was the truth. 
Well, of course it was. He absorbed plenty of shadow fragments instead. <laughs> Sunny gave away that misleading secret on purpose. He didn't want Knight to start questioning the amount of soul shards he was able he was about to spend. Letting the archer think that he was too obsessed with wealth to expend any on increasing his power would hopefully lessen the impact a bit. Meanwhile, Sunny shook his head. No, no. Kai here is the one who will be handing you the shards. I'm just here to point him at the right ones. I have an eye for good memories, you see. By which he meant that his eyes were literally capable of peering into the very essence of memories and discerning their true traits. But neither of them needed to know that. Stev scratched the back of his head. Uh, well, in that case, take a look around. Ask me any questions if something catches your eye. Then he glanced at Knight and scoffed. You could have just asked me for advice, you know? It's not like I can lie to you. Kai smiled with embarrassment. Oh, ah, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. When Stev walked away, he leaned to Sunny and whispered. So the favor you wanted from me is to pretend to buy a memory and then give it to you so that no one knew that you have a hidden ace? Sunny stared at him. Actually, it was a good theory. Having a weapon or tool that no one knew about was a very good advantage. Unfortunately, Kai didn't really know who he was dealing with. Sunny shook his head. No, I don't want you to buy a memory on my behalf. Then, with an earnest smile, he added, I want you to buy around ten. Kai's beautiful green eyes widened. <laughs> ten? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Leaving the charming archers struck dumb and speechless, Sunny walked away and started pursuing the various memories on display. <laughs> He's like, did <laughs> Drop the bomb anyway. <laughs> Sometimes this fucking like this is the this is some rom com shit. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Okay. Ugh. There was a lot of them. By his estimations, at least a hundred, if not more. All sorts of weapons immediately attracted his attention. There were straight swords. <laughs> uh. <sighs> okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Continuing. And there were straight swords, curved swords, <laughs> S stocks, and rapier. Rappy ears, right? That's how we say it. Scimitars and sabers. Various daggers and knives called to him, shining in the bright light on the enchanted lanterns. There were a dozen or so of pole arms, from spears to glaives to halberds to naginadas. Okay, something like that. Mm. No, I did not. Shh. I didn't do anything. I just read what it said. I just read what it said. Several battle axes were displayed nearby. Further away, warhammers, maces, and flails radiated a silent feeling of crushing force. A few bows received a dreamy look from Kai. <laughs> there were suits of armor too. From leather to metal, light to heavy, scale to plate. Elegant, unrefined, graceful, barbarous, whatever a person could wish for. Some of them were shaped like actual armor. Others looked like cloth garments. <laughs> okay. I think so. Let's see. Fuck it. Yeah, it's like a... Yeah. It's like a... Uh, fucking... It's a wooden or metal pole with a curved single-edged blade on the end. It's similar to the European glaive. They are pretty. I must admit. Uh, cloth garments. Placed on tables, various objects begged for his attention. Gods only knew what enchantments they possessed. Well, to be precise, gods and Stev. And Sunny. Walking among the memories, 
he would periodically place his hands on them. Immediately, the inner weave of the memory would be laid bare to his eyes, which were changed forever by the drop of weaver's ichor. Studying the lo logic of the weave, he was able to glimpse its purpose. Of course, there weren't any truly remarkable memories in the hall. Who would want to sell something like that? However, even then, he managed to separate, separate really good ones from simply acceptable, from borderline awful. <laughs> that last category was what he came here for. Quantity over quality, remember? Sunny was almost done choosing the absolute worst memories out of them all when his, slides suddenly, when his sights suddenly fell in a badly illuminated corner. In that corner... Covered in a thick layer of dust, stood a seemingly discarded suit of armor. When Sonny saw it, his hands slightly trembled. Ooh, I want to do another. Oh, Guilty 3. The second chapter is coming in a few hours. Also, I have finally managed to create an auxiliary chapter containing information about the world of the novel, such as ranks of nightmare creatures and so on. You can find it in the volume here. I hope it helps. It is, and it is full of spoilers. I'm not going to read it. Thank you. Good job, Guilty 3. I want to read one more. So we're going to do it. <laughs> Chapter 173. Black Armor. <laughs> For a moment, Sunny froze. However, a second later, he continued to behave just like before, as if nothing had happened. The first rule of haggling. Never let the enemy see that you're interested in buying something. And Sonny was dead set on haggling until Steve's ears started to bleed today. Pretending as though he had not noticed the dusty armor, he walked around a bit more, slowly approaching the corner where it was displayed. Judging by the neglect which which the armor was <laughs> judging by the neglect with which the armor was kept, the master of the memory market did not know its true value. Sonny really wanted to keep it that way, because if he was right, that armor was much more valuable than anything else here. He didn't know for sure, but suspected that it was nothing short of a true treasure. Because he recognized it. What? The suit of ancient plate armor was jet black in color. Its design intricate and solemn. It radiated a feeling of dark, resolve, and stalwart. Adamantine grace. Adamantine grace. All parts of it were perfectly fitted to one another, creating an almost seamless barrier of impenetrable steel. Or rather... Stone. Because the dusty armor was almost exactly the same as the one that Stone Saint was wearing. Oh, Okay. Of course, there were some differences. For starters, this one was somehow more... Impressive. It felt as though it had once belonged to a creature of higher status than the steadfast Shadow. While Shadow's armor was made out of dark granite, this one was cut off cut out of pure black onyx. Its glossy surface seemed to absorb and devour any light that fell on it. And that was just in its dormant state. Once it was animated like that of the stone saint, who knew how fearsome it would become? Why was this treasure gathering dust in a badly lit corner of the memory market? Sunny frowned. Yes, he was most likely the only person in the dark city who had seen the formidable living statues up close. But still... Everything about the onyx armor screamed of how incredible of a memory it was. What was it doing here? Neglected and seemingly forgotten. He had a lot of questions. Finally, he managed to reach the armor without showing how interested in it he was. With a false expression of boredom on his face, Sunny raised a hand and absentmindedly put it on the jet black breastplate. A moment later, his mask of boredom almost cracked. His pupils widened. What he saw beneath the surface of the armor shocked him to the core. The weave of ethereal diamond strings inside it was, was at a completely another level from anything he had ever seen. It was much more complex and vast than even that of the puppeteer shroud, which was not surprising considering that there was no less than six glowing embers connecting it all together. And those embers were much larger and brighter than those inside his current memories. Sunny gulped. In front of him, covered in dust, was an ascended memory of the sixth tier, something that only a fallen terror could leave behind. Jackpot. 
<laughs> get it, get it, get it, get it. His glee, however, did not last long. Almost instantly, Sunny noticed that there was something wrong with the weave of the onyx armor. It was damaged. Fuck! Thousands of strings were torn apart, leaving the whole pattern broken and full of disharmony. Instead of flowing seeming seamlessly, they floated in the darkness, untethered from each other and the nexuses. The whole thing was a mess. That's why it couldn't feel any logical purpose in the weave. It was simply not there anymore. Sunny frowned. How could a memory stay damaged beyond repair? That didn't make any sense. Memories were supposed to repair themselves inside the soul sea as long as they were not completely destroyed. This rule was pretty much ununiversal. It couldn't be broken. Unless a seed of understanding appeared in his mind. However, before Sonny could elaborate on his idea, Steph chuckled and put a giant hand on his shoulder. What an awesome armor, right? My dear friend Sonny? Saying that, he leaned forward and laughed. Thoughtful Throughout Sunny's exploration of the memory market, Steph had approached him several times to describe the most alluring qualities of his wares or simply to chat. He was obviously bored out of his mind in this windowless hall. <laughs> People to talk to! Sunny stared at him and blinked a couple of times. If you only knew what kind of priceless treasure that is, fool. Of all the pieces of crap in this market of yours, this one is by far the most outrageous. I can hardly believe that you have that you had the audacity to show it to people. By which he meant that it was genuinely the best memory in this whole room, if not in the whole castle, except for Gunlog's golden armor, of course. However, if it sounded as though he was blaming Steph for being shameless and trying to sell people an utter piece of crap, well, he couldn't do anything about that, right? Steph sighed. Usually I would, I would get into an argument and try to defend my inventory, but I can't really disagree this time. This armor, no matter how awesome it looks, is indeed absolutely useless. It has been here for long before I put in charge of the market, actually. I even considered it to be a sort of mascot. Sonny scratched the back of his head. How come no one ever bought it? He was pretty sure that he knew, but needed to hear what was Stev's explanation to glean how much the giant man understood. <laughs> how stupid is he? <laughs> Stev shrugged. Why would anyone buy it? Have you not noticed that it's made of stone? Like actual stone? It's so heavy that not even Tessai can move under all that weight. Maybe an Awakened would be able to, but to us sleepers, wearing this armor is pretty much like trying to walk around dressed in a mountain. And that stone is not that hard to break too. And that stone is not that hard to break too. He looked at the onyx armor inside. Actually, this armor has quite a story. It once belonged to a member of the legendary cohort that conquered th this castle. Some even say that it belonged to the first lord himself. Supposedly, it had an enchantment that made it much lighter back then. He looked at the armor with doubt. But when they were fighting some ancient terror, maybe the spire messenger who lived here, the armor was seriously damaged. Something went very wrong. The enchantment was broken, and it turned into a piece of stone. It's so damaged that even the spell can't make sense of it. Simply describing it as, it as unknown that... Unknown this. Oh, unknown that, unknown this. Sunny had to force himself to not hold his breath. The stone saint was, supposedly, created by one of the unknown. It made sense that the armament, armaments of her kind were too. Regardless, it didn't matter that much. He was now pretty sure that he knew why the onyx armor was remaining in his dormant form and couldn't repair itself. It had to do with the difference between the sleepers and the awakened. Once the sleeper finished his trial by walking through a gateway, they would take the final step to becoming a true awakened. Their way of entering the dream realm would change, their aspect would unlock a second ability, and their core would evolve to their next rank. There was a quantitative jump in power, but most of the difference came from the qualitative one. <gasps> Shopping spree. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna get the armor. We need to get that armor. We need answers. God damn it. <laughs> Which will probably only open up more questions. But so be it. We need it anyway. Get it. But that will now be the last chapter. Almost two hours has gone by. 
fucking quick. Very quick. Damn. <laughs> but that's all the time I have because I'm waking up at 4 tomorrow. Yippee! <laughs> Excited. Not at all. Wow. But a lot happened. We're finally done with the time skip. You did, Caliber! Wow! Proud, your first whole stream. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it so much. And to everyone else, I also appreciate everyone that has watched this in any type of way and hear this. Thank you so much. Yes, more Shadows Lay on Tuesday, more streaming on Monday. Yippee. <laughs> Wawas will now begin. Crazy shit today. It's only gonna get crazier, I bet. Like, Guilty 3 is fucking awesome. Crazy otter. Uh, otter. <laughs> otter. <laughs> Author. Love it. More. I need more. I need to consume more Shadow <laughs> Slave at all times. Well, thank you everyone so much for watching, listening, however the fuck you saw this, heard this. Thank you. <laughs> Please go follow me on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, if you would like. I have a Patreon. Look at it. I upload VODs that get uh, taken down. <laughs> and I do colorings weekly. Or monthly. Depends on what tier. Hmm? Uh, and also join the Discord. Please join the Discord. You'll find uh, all my updates, everything on the Discord. The Discord, I use it daily, 24-7 almost. As long as I'm awake, I am... I have it. <laughs> so please go do that. Thank you so much. Have a nice weekend and everything. Enjoy your Friday, rest of your day today. And I'll see you next week. Thank you. Hey, Bye-bye.